Hi there, Jamie Keith here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, I wanna to show you how to create formulas and functions inside Google Sheets. So if you're brand new to uh, Google Sheets and wanting to learn how these basic things work, or maybe you just need that quick refresher uh, because you haven't used it in a while. So let's get started with formulas and functions today at Teachers Tech. Just before we get started here, just so you know, if you take a look down in the description, everything is timestamped. So you can jump to a certain part of this video to find something specifically you're looking for. And also I'm gonna share this uh, spreadsheet with you. So you can just click on the link down below in the description and it will open up, but make sure you go to file and make a copy because it's only in view right now for you to access it. Let's get started right away here. So if you're using the spreadsheet, notice all the tabs at the very bottom uh, with all the different things that I'm covering in this tutorial today, and you can just click on them as we go through and practice on your own. But let's start with basic math uh, formulas here. So uh, if we're just putting in any formula, what we need to do first is put the equal sign in. So I'm gonna put the equal sign in and go ahead and just uh, write a formula. So now I put the equal sign in, I could go, let's go eight and we can put an operation in, we'll go addition and then we'll put another number and just hit return. So we have 13 and it shows our answer. If I click in it once, if you see the formula bar right up here, you can see what the operate or what the formula is and I can change it up here too. So I could change my answer here. It will adjust. If I double click in here, it will also change. So this again, I can change, add and go through like this. Remember, you need the equal sign. If you just go ahead and uh, put an operation in like so, it's not gonna recognize it as a formula. So you do need the equal sign first. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you do your formulas like this. I would use cell reference, what I'll show you. Uh, what a couple of the reasons would be, if I'm just looking at this number and it's not clicked on, I don't know what's uh, creating that number. I don't know even if there's a formula there. If I click on it, yes, I can get the the quick look up in the formula, formula bar uh, to know that. Uh, but what I would do is use a cell reference, so like this. So I want my answer over here. So what I'm gonna do is put my equal sign in first to start it, and I'm just gonna tell this cell here and put my addition uh, sign in to add to this cell like this. And so it goes through and does the addition. If I click on it now and check my formula bar, you can see it's B8 plus B9, and I can see the numbers here, but you can quickly change these numbers. So if I was changing two to three, notice as soon as I change that there, it turns to eight here. So if I was going down and looking at the different ones, put your equal sign first, click on your cell, uh, use your subtraction, click on the next one, and so on. Uh, remember there's multiplication and division. Just take a look at uh, all the, the different symbols there for each one. I'm not gonna go through each of them. I'll just do one more as an example as uh, the power. So if I put that one in, click the first one. So above my six with holding the shift, and then go through and then I get uh, five to the power of three. If I change any of these, I make it larger. You can see how everything changes instantly. So that's using cell reference, just your basic formulas in math inside Google Sheets. All right, so I moved over to my functions tab here. And if you've never used functions, they can speed up a lot of things inside Google Sheets for you. They can calculate mathematical operations. They can look up uh, data for you inside your spreadsheet. They could calculate date and time. So a number of different things. And I'll be showing you uh, that through these to this tutorial here today. But let's start with some basic functions. So this is just gonna be starting with the sum function. I'll show you how you can add them. Now, first of all, let's just go back a step thinking how I showed you last time to add up. So if I was using the equals here, I could click on each one as I go through, just like I showed you before uh, in the previous part, when I get to the end, I could hit my enter and I get to 170, it adds everything up. Now you can see it up in the formula bar right there. Now there's a faster way and this is where functions come in to speed this up. So the sum function, and just like uh, just like what I showed you before, you need to start with an equal when using your function. So we hit there equal, we can start spelling sum 
just like this and it comes up. So this, it's already suggesting what I might be wanting here. It says D3 to D6. So I'm just gonna, uh, actually, first of all, I'm just gonna go to the normal one without the suggestion. Uh, and then I could select the area that I want. And it is gonna be the same thing. If I would have selected uh, the suggestion, su suggestion, then it would have just saved that step. But I'm gonna hit my enter and you can see it, it adds it up very quickly, a lot faster than going through each step, especially if you had a large row of uh, information, you wouldn't want to have to go through and hit the addition or whatever operation you're doing each time. So functions save you time. Now, I'm just gonna move over to this one here. So I'm gonna hit the equal sign again. Uh, a different way you can get to this, you can see the suggestion is there if I was clicking on it and that goes a lot quicker. I'm just gonna go Control Z, undo, uh, undoes the last step or Command Z on a Mac. So if I go ahead this time, I'm gonna to go to insert up top here. So if I go insert, you can see functions are right here. Up at the top are kind of your most common ones. So we could go sum, like so, and I could go ahead and highlight what I want in there and hit return. Now I could go through, if you could just wanted to type it out, if you look in the formula bar up here, you could just type out equal sum and put your uh, range in. So it's saying a range when you're using that colon in between G3 uh, and G6. Now, another thing I wanna show you here, and I'll just uh, quickly put the uh, sum in here again. So as soon as I start typing, I'm gonna use uh, the suggestion here. So I'll just uh, and hit return, it adds it all up. What I wanna point out here is if you take a look, if I go ahead uh, and kind of highlight this area right here of what I just summed up, and I'm just gonna move myself out of the way and just follow my mouse down. Notice that in the bottom right-hand corner, we have this right here. You wanna take a quick look of what might be happening, highlight an area, and it gives you some average, min, max count really quickly, just for that quick visual. If you go and highlight, um, if you go and highlight a bunch of data like that, then you can go and take that quick look at it. So if I click off, notice it goes away. So select your information uh, that you want, and then it's gonna appear again. All right, so let's try a different one. We're just gonna use count. And remember, you could go to the insert or you could just start typing it. Put your equals and if we start typing count, uh, we can see it's right here. So what do I want? These ones, the count is just gonna tell me how many uh, numbers. So it's gonna count it up. It should be five. You can see it is five just like that. All right, so something else I just wanna show you that you can do, I'm just gonna delete this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my equals and I'm gonna sum this up here. So I'll just use my sum and I'm gonna highlight what I want. You can actually add more numbers to this if you want. So if I used a comma and I could put any number, I'll just put 100, hit return. So it added this up, it was 80 and then it added 100 to it. So if I click on it, if you look in the formula bar, you can see it's adding 100 to it. Now, I wouldn't uh, suggest doing it that way. So uh, what I would do, let's go move over here, is if we were summing something up, we could hit uh, equals and we could go ahead, do our sum. Notice it's not right above, but I can still grab this this time. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a comma, click on this spot here, and close it or hit return and it does the same thing here. So uh, again, using that cell reference versus just type it in, typing it in because you can't see it unless you type in it to see the formula cell or double clicking to see it that way too. So I would suggest using that cell reference. So that's just your basics getting started with functions. Let me show you some more now. All right, let me show you some other very popular uh, for functions to use inside Google Sheets. And this would be average, median, and mode. So if I was talking about uh, average of these uh, four numbers right here, uh, I'm gonna type this out actually. So I'm gonna use my equal sign and I'm gonna type average like so. This is where I would start with my bracket. And then I, I'm gonna start identifying the top of the range, which would be D3. And as soon as I type that, notice that this is highlighted right here. I put my colon in and now I'm gonna put D6. So D6 will close it. So I'm gonna put D and six and I can go ahead and hit enter. I get 42.5, it averaged this. You can see if I look in the formula bar, right up top here. Uh, now, last time I showed you the insert uh, 
up here where you can go to your functions. Here's a shortcut right here. You can go get to these uh, functions very easy. I'm gonna go ahead, hit average here, highlight what I want just like that. Now a couple other, uh, as I said, popular uh, ones we can use for functions if you're looking to quickly use them. If we could put equals, I can start typing median and you can see it suggested it. I'm gonna go ahead, it gives me my correct range. You can see by the highlighted that is the range that I want. Hit return and I get my median there and I can do mode Again, start typing mode. And it you notice it's picking up because of this here. I'm gonna go and click my range and there we have it. So very simple to add uh, to use functions like these ones listed here. So remember to be using the worksheet provided so you have all this data here that you don't have to go and enter your own. And I'm just gonna show you quickly min and max. So if I wanted the minimum, minimum number out of this list right here, if I go ahead and start typing min, you can see, again, the suggested comes up. I could go and put my range in like so, hit enter and it's in. I could also go, uh, so click where I want my answer. Where do I want, uh, here's my max. So this is gonna give me the maximum number. So this should output 50 because 50 is the uh, larger number there. And you can imagine if these number, they, these lists were a lot longer, uh, I'm just showing you on these short ones to show you how these work, but you can see how these functions can really add, uh, help you a lot, speed things up. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about formulas and functions dealing with date and time. Uh, so I could go to any cell and I could put, let's say today's date here, I'll just type May 7th and it will enter in like so. So, but that is to that particular date. So tomorrow, if I open this spreadsheet, it's gonna still say May 7th on here. Let's say if I wanted it to change all the time, it's better to put a function in for that. And so what we do, again, we start with our equal sign. So if I go put our equal sign and I just start typing today like this, I'm just gonna uh, open and close my brackets like so, hit return. It looks the same as what I had before, but the difference will be when I open the spreadsheet tomorrow, it's gonna be a day ahead. So it would say it would reflect tomorrow's date, be May 8th, so it will, will change. Now, I'm gonna show you how we can add or subtract with some of these dates as well. So let's say hypothetically my birthday was on June uh, 8th here, and I wanna see how many days until my birthday. So I could do a uh, just a simple formula with this. So if I go equals, I pick the further out date here and I'm gonna subtract. So I just go ahead and hit subtract here from this one and I hit enter. You can see it's in 32 days. So tomorrow when I open this spreadsheet or this uh, this tab, if I was looking at this, it would say 31 date, uh, 31. This one would stay the same because I wrote that date in, but this would reflect one more day. Now, uh, let's try a different little example with uh, adding. And what I'm gonna do is, let's say, uh, I'm gonna just hit equals. I'm gonna copy this cell right here. So I'm gonna put this cell in right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna hit an addition here and say whatever number I put in this cell is gonna get added to it. So I'm just gonna hit return uh, on it. And so uh, what I'm gonna do now is, you can see it's just saying May, uh, today's date. But if I say, oh, maybe the grace period is in 20 days and I go ahead and enter 20, it just moved ahead now 20 days. You can see now it's May 27th. So that's just some uh, basic with the, some functions with date there. We can also do this with time. So if I go ahead, uh, if you're looking, if you want the time that's happening right now, that's what your that's what your function is. So if I go ahead and put equals and start typing now and do the same thing, you can see it enters in that time. So these are just some beginner tips with working with date and time inside Google Sheets. You can use formulas to combine two cells from two different columns. So let me show you how this works. I have Nancy Smith uh, in two different columns. You can see separated. I want to put them into one. So I'm just going to go over here to start with. Uh, so we start with our equal sign again, like so. We click on what we want. So we want C3. If we use the end symbol like this above your number seven, and then I'm just going to click on the other one, like so. And you can see it gives me the hint what's going to happen here. I can go and it gets Nancy Smith. And I can copy this all the way down if I want, like so, by grabbing. But that doesn't look quite 
uh, the way I want it. I don't want it all in one. I want to be able to have a space between it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this column here and I'm going to put equal. So again, I'm going to start by with my bracket and then uh, Nancy is going to be the first one. And I am going to uh, put my N symbol again, like so. I'm going to use my uh, quotation mark here and I'm going to give it a comma. But I'm also going to put a space in it because I want a comma and then the space. Uh, and then I'm going to close with another quotation mark like this. And I'm going to put another uh, end symbol and click on Nancy Smith like so and close it and hit return. And then you can see it's written the way I want. Now, uh, I could copy this down. A lot of times you'll get the suggested fill. You can just click on it and it will go all the way down. So use formulas to combine different columns. If you uh, have it separated first, you can use this formula to quickly go down and combine from multiple columns. All right, so let's talk about the if function here. And when you're using if function, what you're trying to do is make a logical comparison between conditions. And let me give you an example of this simple uh, one here. So what I want to have happen, if this spot says apple, I want it to say true. But if it doesn't, I want it to say false. And you're gonna see in this case, so does this spot say apple? It should come back true. So let's create an if. Now we start with our equal sign or if statement. We put our equal sign and I start typing if and you can see it comes up. I'm just going to click on it. I just want to point out if I'm going to close this right here. Uh, if you uh, don't see it, just hit this little question mark, it opens it back up because this helps you walk through uh, when you're, especially when you're first learning to walk through uh, your different steps. So if, what do I want to have happen? So if I'm going to click on this spot, C6, equals, so I'll put the equals and I'm going to use my quotation mark if it equals apple and I'm spelling it exactly how I want it. So that's my condition here. I want it to return something. So I'm going to say return true here. So I spell that correctly and I'm going to, so notice it's at this part right now and it says put a comma. I'm going to put a comma. If not, it is going to say false and I'm just going to end this up and hit enter. So it came back true. I'm going to copy this down to the next spot. So it's going to look at this spot and says, it's going to say, hey, if this is Apple, return true. Now, if it doesn't return false, this is orange, so it should return false. So let's do a little copy here. We'll just copy it down and we get our false one here. Let me give you another example here. So I have a number in here and what I want to have happen is uh, whatever number this is, if it's less than 100, it's gonna say less than 100 here. If it's greater than 100, it will say greater than 100. So let's go ahead and hit our equal and our if. And right away it suggested the one up above. We don't want that. We don't want it to su suggest the example I just did. I'm gonna to go to a new one here. So if, I'm gonna say if 50, is less than 100. So that's my condition there. I'm going to go ahead and put a comma. I want it to say something. So what I'm going to do is start my quotation mark. I'm going to say less than 100. And I'm going to end it because this these are words that I'm going to have come up. And now I'm going to put my comma in and notice it goes to now what's my false value going to be. So my false value is going to be and I'm going to write this out. So I start with a quotation mark is greater than 100 and I'm going to close it with another quotation mark and and bracket and enter. So it looked at this and said, is this less than 100? And it said, yes, yeah. so it gave me back my first condition that is less than 100. If this number changed to 120, notice that this changed to greater than 100. So that is an example, some easy examples of using an if statement in the function and how it can work for you. Okay, so now I want to show you a very powerful, popular function inside Google Sheets, and that's VLOOKUP. And let me give you an example what it does. So I just have these the simple data here, some apples and different fruit and some amounts. If I type in something here, so if I was going to type in apples and hit return, it gives me back the corresponding amount. So it can search through this column right here and then give me the corresponding amount back. So if I was looking for lemons here, if I type lemons, I'll just click on it, it brings me back 
40. So what I'm going to show you now is how to set up this VLOOKUP using this column here. And what we start with, again, we start with our equal sign like this, and I'm going to start typing VL, and you can see it's right there. So I'm going to follow along here uh, and to make sure I get all the parts correct. So VL, what am I searching? So what am I searching? Anything that's in this cell right here. So whatever is going to be selected. So I, put, I go in there and I'm going to, going to put my comma. So now it went from this next step. What's the range? And so the range is everything in this table right here, F8 to G11. And I'm going to hit comma what is the index so what is meant by that so they, there's these different columns so the index of this column would be one and this one would be two so this is where i want it to come out of so i would put uh, a two here and i'm going to put a comma again here so is sorted so if you want the exact match to come out by default it's going to be true but if you want the exact match it's going to be false so if i uh, am going to type i'll type false here and then just close it so you can see pork and it returned 10. if i go ahead and type fish it changed it to 50. And I'm going to just change this real quickly. I'm going to go over to this one here and I'm just going to modify, click in here, and I'm going to change this one to true. And watch what happens. Uh, make sure, I, and I'll put true in here. So you think, well, that's working all right. But look what happens if I type oranges here it didn't go through and change it that based on so it's not get finding that exact match on some of these here so if i go back and change it back to uh, false on this one and you'll see it start to work again so making sure if you want that exact match uh, with it uh, making sure you pick uh, false i just wanted to point out too so uh, with any of these here so if i go in if you go to the bottom and i'm going to hit learn more they give you great examples here right i'll move myself out of the way and you can kind of go through and gives you definition of each spot here so you can see how they talk about how faults is recommended uh, on these ones so it'll give you extra notes if there's something you want to look up make sure you go to that learn more and use the help that's built right into it but anyway so that's v lookup a very powerful powerful function inside google sheets so conditional functions allow us to sum, average, min, max, count uh, based on the criteria, criteria or condition that we choose. Now, let me give you an example here. In this case, I have lemons here written and it comes back with 120. What it did was it looked for all the lemons and the corresponding amount next to it and added it all up. So if I look, there's three apples here, each at 50 should be 150. If I type apples in here, it returns 150. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and just add it back here. I'm going to put equal. So we're using the sum if. So I'm going to type sum if right here. And now I'm going to walk through what we need to do. So what's the range uh, here? So the range is going to be uh, from here to here that this is going to take place in. And so I'm going to put a comma what's the criterion the criterion is this right here where it says whatever i choose that is going to go in here so it's going to be c17 what's the sum range well the sums are going to be in this column right here so i'm going to just highlight this and put a comma and then the last one here and i'm just going to actually close this up and hit return and you can see it returned me back the 150 if i type lemons here it returns me back the 120. Now we can also do this, now this is some ifs, so we can do this with multiple columns too. And so I'm gonna just go and show you how this one's created. I'll put some ifs here. We, we need to follow along with what it's gonna be telling us. So the first thing is the sum range. So where's the sum range? This is the sum range here. So I'm gonna select my sum range, put my comma, What's the next thing I want? The criteria range one. So range one is going to be uh, where am I choosing it from? So this is criteria range one, this through here, and I'm going to put a comma. What's criteria one now? Well, criteria one is the this spot right here, whatever I'm going to be typing into here, and I'm selecting that and comma. Well, what's criteria range two? I'm going to, this is my criteria range two. I'm going to highlight it, put my comma, 
And now I'm going to put, uh, it's asking about criteria two. Criterion two is this spot right here. So now I'm going to close this up and you can see orange's navel. Right here, there's orange's navel. And if I look, there should be one more here and it added up that and that. So if I was looking for apples and then if I type apples and then over here, I type uh, Fuji, it should return 50 because there's only one of them. So that you can do this with multiple columns on this. And I just have some other ones set up for this example in these uh, that you can try on your own. But if you're that work very similar. So if you're putting your in or equals and then you just type your count if and go ahead and select your count if and go through and just follow along. So we have our range and our criterion. And remember, at any point, we have learn more on these and you can open that up and it's gonna explain a little bit more to you. So I hope you, uh, this has worked well for you. I wanted to point out one last thing here uh, for you inside, uh, inside this Google Sheets tutorial about functions and formulas. And that is, if we go, I'm gonna actually go to this right here and there's a couple different ways. If we go to the learn more, and we open up the Google Sheets function list. This will tell you, kind of give you an example description of everything in here too. You can do a search and you can get uh, an idea of what the uh, different functions can do. So take a look at that because once you start to know the functions in Google Sheets, it becomes a lot more powerful for you. So I hope you like this tutorial today on functions and formulas in Google Sheets. Hopefully it came out, comes out, uh, comes handy uh, for you. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn in Google Sheets or any other uh, Google Microsoft products down in the, the comments down below. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.